and welcome everyone for another video and this time we are not in ranked i decided to take um, a, a match of uh, a scream that has been played between two teams i assume it's like the doctors where we have wandered math seismic she and cure not sure what is the name of aru penguin wangle gratty tech and kid probably rogue I assume, but not sure. But all those players, very well known in the scene, have participated in multiple PCC championships. They have been also, like, most of them, I think, like, winner of tournaments. Uh, so, should be interesting, because, like, in the previous video that we covered on Ian, uh, I was kind of curious to see, like, how Ian can maybe be exploited by teams, because I felt like this ultimate Quelling Grace really, really has strong potential in team fight. And so I'm kind of curious to see like another match of Yin in the jungle, of course, to get a little bit more knowledge, but also like see a little bit how the, the character fur into the 5v5 um, world. So here, a little bit different from the previous match. Here we see that we started with the backlash, but of course we go for the hunt immediately. Uh, and this time we're starting like red buff. So no blue buff start shenanigans. We're just going to go for it. And we're gonna get like secure the thing. Ooh, that could have been very bad, but in the end, we only lost like maybe one or two auto attacks. And here we're gonna like use the wind bird, try to hit like as many targets as we can. Gonna secure the kill. Red buff, five camp into two camp. Also, one thing. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the wind burn when you activate it, kind of work like as an auto attack reset. So that's a little thing you should be actually actively trying to do to maximize your DPS in the jungle. Here we get the level 3. We're looking immediately at mid lane. Wangle is here. He doesn't have his level 3 yet. Seismic, get the stun. They're pushing him back, so they're going to force the flash immediately. It's kind of nice that Mav ar arrived at that timing right before the level 3. That means that the Torn Space wasn't there yet. And here he accepts to just like share a little bit of experience with Seismic. So, Interestingly, we do have the Decker mid to try like to probably fight into the Gideon. That's something that people were liking to do back in the times. And here we're sharing like a lot of experience with Mav. So as a jungler, yeah, we're kind of trying to go like, how can that work if we kind of feed a lot into Mav? I don't know how much, uh, how well it works, especially since I think like, because you have the hunt item, you're taking like a reduced uh, amount of um, like a gold, at least from like getting like wave minion. And here you can see like how Seismic is coming, helping Mav clear the jungle. After they crash the wave, we do have like kind of like this double early like jungle strats to help like clearing like the old blue side jungle like faster. Like, I'm glad I got to pick that game. So we see like team kind of experimenting and with PCC 10 just around the corner, like uh, this is the type of thing that can actually give you an edge. So I love team being a little bit more uh, like uh, trying out stuff, like thinking out of the box, trying to find solution. And uh, yeah. So the whole blue side has been cleared. We're going back to the red side. Gratty is around looking for the five camp, but Seismic is still there. Like here, Seismic should go like into the mid lane. Wave is crashing. I feel like it's a little bit too much, but we're looking for the kill onto Gratty. We're gonna get the flash. Ooh, we almost get the root, but the root doesn't connect. Oh, little nice back step here, like from map. We have to be careful. Map secure the kill. We're gonna follow up onto Tekken Kid. We're waiting for the wind burn. Unfortunately, the stun doesn't connect, but we got the root. We're gonna get the flash. And we're overzealous. But I love like the aggression. Could have been a double kill. Was almost there. But like little thing that I don't know if you catch while well, the Heaven's Furry of the Seraph, the Q spell was on top of Mav. Mav decided like to step back two steps so it brings the Serat closer to his teammate. As I say that you said like yeah of course it's obvious but being able to do it like in the middle of the action as fast as he did I feel like not a lot of player really sync to all those little details so it was very very nice to see. 
So Seismic falling a little bit behind naturally since he has been like following like crazy is almost like more than a full level down so they kind of going with that okay we're kind of sacrificing mid lane to kind of rotate create a lot of impact on other side. In terms of maxing ability, seems to be the same thing as what Pandas has done in the previous match I covered. We're going for the wind burn maxing first. But in terms of itemization, it's already different. Like we got the rapid rep here with like the saber and longbow. I assume probably lightning oak would be my guess as the first item. And here we're looking to apply some pressure once again we come like getting the farm of the mid lane i want to have valuable it is once again with that hunt item here we're gonna get seismic taking a lot of damage forced to flash away and you can see wangle already level six while we do have like only level four close to level five mid laner on the side of the doctors Overall, in terms of CS, though, we're slightly ahead. Which come, despite the 20 CS down, we have... Okay, maybe Gratty CS hasn't updated yet. But yeah, we're kind of kind of invest, investing a lot onto this Yin. Like, trying to see if we can uh, kind of hyper carry with Yin. Probably that would be an easy backlash. But we're going to try like to collapse onto Bondroot. Gratty is here. Ooh, I feel like here you shouldn't go for a uh, behind. Yeah... I'm not a big fan of that. I feel like here you should just go back to Bondroot and try like to protect him and then disengage towards the tower. Probably here Mav is dead. I love that drone. Like I, I really do. Like there, there is a fight that we're watching and the drone decide to jump somewhere else. Oh, we got the Mario ultimate. Gonna be enough the shield. Holy. And she's saving, getting the level six in the dual lane, coming for the clutch moment. Got the root. Oh, we missed the backlash. I feel like there was like outplay potential, but she not being like uh, fast enough with the backlash. I feel like Gideon can never really like contest the in because backlash is pretty easy. Well, when I say pretty easy, of course, like I'm a boomer, so I would never be able to send it back. But I kind of assume like the top player in the game being able to have the reaction time to be able to just send it back. But yeah, that was that was pretty close. So we got Eviscerator plus Lightning Oak. So here, like, we should be able to delete some people quite fast. But that means we don't really have any defense. So like a Seismic Assault, we cannot do much against it. So that's something that we really have to respect because probably one Seismic Assault and the Mavis can be dead if you go kind of squishy build. And here once again you see like the jungler coming to feed off the mid lane i wouldn't recommend that in your ranked game uh i'm not even sure it's good in a custom environment in the 5v5 scenario but i like the idea that they're trying but i don't think in the in ranked game it's actually like valuable like putting your only later that far behind meaning that you're gonna lose a lot of pressure on the mid lane by itself uh in the mid game like between the 12 13 minutes mark until the 20 minutes mark which create like a lot of problem when it comes to objective here we try to get as much damage we're gonna like get and we got the shield and a good collapse of the dual lane but we get the ultimate and we're gonna be dead so wangle finding the little nice angle here we're gonna try to follow that up Cure is still chasing. Gonna get the kill onto Aru. She is trying like to buy time so they don't collapse on Cure. And actually, like by splitting the attention, they're both gonna get out. I feel like Wengol should probably have gone to Cure. Uh, and that way they can secure the kill. Uh, or at least like the one for one trade for sure. Here spending a little bit too much time on she. She doing like a very good job at baiting Wengol away from the important fight. And here we we're thinking about what to build next. We're gonna go for the Great Sword as the second item. First item starting to be completed across the board. 
So that's me going for the Galaxy Grief first item. So really like this idea that we have our mid laner that is just meant to be everywhere on the map and we don't care that much about mid. Uh, I like that it's different. And once again, you can see Mav getting like the, the farm in the mid lane. How far behind is Seismic? Yeah, it's a one level and a half down. Well, we're not that far ahead on the... Like, we're actually like even with the enemy jungler when it comes to that. So... So far, in terms of the number only, I feel like it's not working that much in their favor. We're not even that far ahead in terms of optimization. So, we're gonna see in the end if like that strategy kind of pan out but like i was saying i don't recommend it in your rocket rank game like having your mid laner being that far behind can be a big detriment but here we're looking for the gank onto tekken kid we kind of hide our presence a little bit we were appearing on the minimap thanks to the minion but tekken kid like going into the opposite direction we still have the dash we're gonna try like to catch get a little bit of damage and that's gonna be a dead Tekken kid at this Tekken kid like kind of buying a lot of time which mean uh, no e easy transition into mini prime or something else on the map even though here we're going to go for it as we see Kreti is just gonna cover the off lane and we do have the mid laner we do get the mural that rotated towards mid lane so that should be a free mini prime I would probably have loved to see like a trade of mini prime for Fangtus on the side of the dusk team but here that's how they decided to play it and we're gonna secure the mini prime here that means like the fangtus is up for the taking while we do add mav with mini prime bondrude is trying like to bait he's gonna go in with the ultimate bringing it back into a root into a stun we do have the gideon ultimate though with the quelling grace being used so we try to get as much damage as we can we get the kill we're getting very, very low, but uh, we ended up dying. Pondrud still like trying to get the kill. Pondrud with one HP still surviving. That's a bit crazy. We try to get the shield, we get the stun, we get the slow. She trying like once again to do the bait. Penguin arriving, looking for the seismic assault. Gonna get the flash. And people will probably like be able to disengage. In the meantime, we do have Aru securing the mid tower, while on the other side, we do have Cure securing a tower. So both carry, not really like willing to be part of the action and just gonna secure the kill. So after Lightning Oak, the second item that has been selected by Mav is a Dust Devil, being like uh, increasing the move speed. So I guess you can like stick to your target better with uh, when you activate your Wind Burn. Also, like easier like to just dodge ability while you auto attack. We're gonna go like for a quick, quick clear. And now we're gonna group up around the Fangtus. We're gonna look to the ward. Looking for a little bit of poke from Penguin. And cure, securing the kill. Onto Wangle, we're gonna join with the Lash Kickover. And that's gonna be a double kill. The offlane didn't rotate. Well, here we do see that the steel was like here. Now he's gonna take like the... I was just going back to base. But that's gonna be secure like the second objective of the match for the Doctors with this Fangtus. And you can see like they're not gonna stay around since they see that there is no contest. They just leave Mav doing it alone. And interestingly here we can see that Mav actually put a second point into the Lash Kick. Deciding that maybe here we'll see if it confirms. He has three points into Lash Kick, so he actually preferred to max the dash before maxing the Backlash. And probably using the Backlash mainly defensively and not really for the damage. Once again, drone jumping. So here they're going to try to collapse. We get like triple kill. 
but it's not like we're doing anything with it on the dusk side we're gonna get like an additional kill on offlane but there is no tower to be taken for that there is no objective to be taken for that so we should be looking at invading the red side jungle I feel like that's a big miss opportunity like with triple kill here instead of going for that steel kill in my opinion you steal like the whole right side jungle and then you collapse on the steel if he's still around and then you go for the reset because just like that steel kill in itself I don't feel like it's really that valuable so here once again you see like how they kind of want to put some farm onto Mav, like they give him a lot of like lane minions but i still like wonder how efficient that is once when you have a hunt because you receive diminishing gold from excessive minion kills so like a big portion of that gold is kind of is kind of lost even though if in the experience there is like no change We get the Quelling Grace level 2. Now he's gonna try like, to defend the tower. Second so can without any issue. They're looking for the dive, but... They're gonna have to walk away from the tower. They took a lot of damage. But now we don't have the E, so we're gonna go back to it. And very, very good combo. Well played. So now on the other side of the map, they're gonna try like to make something happen. But they're gonna secure the tower and they can maybe go for the tier 2 if nobody like comes to defend. And we get Lacerat taking the teleporter, trying to come to help. But Cure is following that up. But we have Wengol also that is here. So we get the ultimate from Shi'i and everyone is collapsing after that teleporter and it's gonna be like kind of a mess of a fight. Mav is not very healthy so he has to be careful and immediately Tekken Kid going on him trying to make himself like complicated to target with the lash kick, the flash. Still gonna be a double kill for Wrangle. We try to get as much damage as we can. We have to be careful because if the steel dies she doesn't have a lot of damage and that's probably gonna be a cleanup. Which should be converted into a mini prime, most likely, because we only have seismic with the decker in mid lane still alive. They kind of playing like this double support, as you can see here. We have the Galaxy Grief Marshall mid Rift Walker. Wow. Okay, I didn't even see that coming since like it took me like 18 minutes to realize they're going double support crest. And that is why, like, Mav is here all the time in the mid lane because Seismic is not receiving the gold. That is wild. Um, in terms of overall gold, though, it seems to be working out for them because they're ahead on the golds. So kind of like this double support ID with, like, double hard carry plus, like, kind of a tank that kind of make the comps maybe viable. But yeah, like, so that's why we were, like, spending so much time in mid lane is because Seismic wouldn't, like, can benefit from the last hit minion. That's wild. Let's see how it works for them. Like... I, I'm really curious. Like, I'm not sure it's crazy, insanely good, but... At the same time, you see that Cure is super far ahead when it comes to gold, but I feel like it's mainly thanks to just the 10th kill he has. So here we're farming the blue side jungle. Fengtus is respawning. People are kind of converging around it. The Muriel is not there, but the Muriel has access with the ultimate, so... Here we're gonna try like, to enter into the pit, try to go into Gratty, it's the 1v1 fight. We got the Muriel ultimate as well, but it's not gonna be enough. And so that's gonna be a big fight, we're gonna try to get like as much as we can. We're gonna get like a kill, overall it's a 2 for 1, only the Yin is dead and... 
They're gonna keep focusing, and I wish the drone wasn't jumping to target all the time. Please, Omera, if you can fix something in the replay system, is that drone jumping all the time. That would be wonderful. But yeah, in the end, pretty good cleanup by the doctors, securing uh, all those skills and securing the Fangtus for themselves. When Gold trying like to stay alive, it's gonna get chased. Use the flower buff. Seismic being annoying, but doesn't have a lot of damage, so cannot get the kill by himself. So I assume we're working towards the Terminus, probably, with Claimer plus Crimson Edge. And here we go, and that's a nice pickup. And that's something I wanted to mention. I feel like Yin is very polari polarized in her matchup. Sorry, English is hard sometimes. Like, I feel like, for instance, like when you're against a bruiser like Terra that just go in your face, I feel like Yin cannot do anything. But against like some more mage, like Argus that we have seen in previous match here, I feel like also the Gideon, I feel like Yin is very 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 strong because she can like protect very well here you can see we just go quelling grace kind of stop like the aggression of most people we do get the gutian ultimate though so that's probably gonna be a dead map oh the shield we're still not dead one hp we have to be careful pretty gonna get the kill and yin ended up falling in the end it's a 2v2 2v3 but to get the Terra coming back, Seismic, maybe they try to go like both support to try to make a play. It doesn't work out. Ari is going to use his Liberator for a little bit of shield and that should be like a whole cleanup. Penguin, no mana though. Oh, we got the stun. And we get the whole cleanup here. So a 5-4-2 in the end. A uh, 4-3, I think, because Tekken Kid was dead, so... Despite the fact that it was a 5v4, they actually like secure uh, the better end of that fight. And here it kind of show a little bit, maybe like the Gideon impact in every single team fight compared to the Decker impact in every single team fight. I feel like kind of show overall. So, but at the same time, one thing I'm kind of scared on the side of the Dust team is that they don't really have like true front lines. So once those like Yin and Revenant like start one-shotting people, I don't really know how, how they fight into that. Very good shield, but it's still a lot of damage. Gideon ultimate, they don't really have anything to stop it, but... He's gonna TP back. Try to get the TP. <laughs> Wangle. I think the Duke shoes, they managed to kill Cure in the meantime, but they're gonna secure it by killing Aru back. We're being careful. Drone is jumping because that's what he loves to do. Ooh, Mav 1 HP. Grati gonna secure the kill. He's gonna go for the next target. Taken King arriving. Grati buying as much time as he can in the air. And very, very nice team fight. Still a 4 4 2 in that team fight. And yeah, overall in teamfight, I feel like the rogue side is having like the better end of the stick most of the time. Though it's also interesting that they have double soulstone, which means in terms of ward coverage, they are actually like pretty insane on the map. With double soulstone, like there is no way the enemy team can like really fight into it. But at the same time, that kind of come at the cost of like road damage overall. And we've seen that. I feel like it makes like team fight are kind of complicated for them. Let's see how this like this Opram should be finished before they arrive. Okay, we're gonna get like the ultimate. Seismic is arriving. They do secure the objective. Penguin is dead though. We tried to go for the ultimate. We already killed two. 
Kratty's kind of stuck. And they managed to kill three. So a very good exit frag. Should be a free Primal Fangtus for them. Well, not Primal Fangtus, but third Fangtus. Because we're not Primal Fangtus time yet. It was an Undance River bug. And here I think like the team is gonna split push in mid while Mav is just gonna secure by himself the third Fangtus. There would be a little play maybe for Iru. He can take the teleporter and then try to steal it with Atomizer, his ultimate. At the same time, you probably see it on the minimap, so. You know that's Triple Fangtus. So, Triple Fangtus is kind of dangerous. Like I said, like as soon as this composition, like the Yin and the Revenant, becomes very good at one-shotting people, I don't think the Dusk team really can like handle it. But in team fight, they still have like good potential. But I feel like the Gideon has been instrumental to the team fight wins, and he will start to reach the point that he's gonna get deleted by the enemy team uh, very fast. Like Revenant plus him just targeting the Gideon while he ult. It's probably like a dead Gideon like super, super fast. No wind. We'll change that. So we got the Onyxian Quiver. Kind of curious how that works, actually. I, I assume you're a melee character. So you get a 2% attack speed and 1% damage mitigation. Uh... And you don't have like the additional fires shot. So it's kind of interesting because it's like a ranged character that has melee characteristic. So here we're looking to group up maybe in mid lane. I think we still have two people with the Oprem on the Dusk side. Here we're like trying to maybe catch people. We can see like we let the minion wave advance. Maybe they were like overstepping and we tried to collapse on them. But in the meantime, we have taken kid applying pressure on the tier two tower. So we have to react to that. And there is no big objective to be taken on the map at the time being. So, oh, we're going to try like to collapse. There is kind of a fight. They tried to go on to she. But that means she is dead, but now we're gonna like turn. We use the Quelling Grace to kind of create like a, a protecting side. But the damage is pretty big. Like once again, Wangold with the Black Hole. Kind of creating like a very good... Oh, people are getting solo. Mav, Bondred, all 1 HP. They do kill 2, but they were very close to kill 4. And if they kill 4, I think they can break open the base. It's only two dead and no big objective. It's definitely some TR2 being secured, but I don't know if they can push into the inhibitors. So they do secure the TR2. They decided to not keep pushing further. I think that's the correct call. I don't think they had what it takes to actually break the inhibitors. So just disengage still as much as you can. Go spend your gold and come back stronger for the next team fight. For the flash. We are out with 1 HP. That's going to be a lot of damage. And that's a dead map. It's a little bit like one of the problems of Yin, like uh, once the Terra is on you or the Serat is on you, you don't really have much to get them out. Saving Bondrud with 1 HP and Cure actually securing the kill onto Haru. So in the end, they managed to get the better end of the stick. Here we try to go for the all on team fight. We secure multiple kill. We're gonna keep going in. Ooh, nice seismic assault. Cure is at 1 HP. And we secure like 3 additional kill after Ari dropped. So. Unfortunately for them, no big objective is up. So they can just get like map control with that. 
but it's not gonna be enough to secure a mini prime uh, or prime or primal fangtus and i think people will be up at the time those objectives are finally gonna appear on the map so it's still like more gold they're still like progressing forward if we look a little bit at the builds but you can secure is already like max item like he's fully completed his build and uh so that's like the saving grace on the side of the doctors is that we really have cure that is like super duper strong well on the other side like we're only like four items four item and half friends this guy is already six items yeah cure has been having a great game that's for sure back to mav and then river buff Ooh. that could be a dead wangle probably a dead wangle unless his team is arriving oh we're dodging the seismic assault very nice black hole gonna force like the Mario ultimate we're trying to stay alive Ooh, one hp we're gonna kill wangle all those fights are so close uh, and that was a team fight to win we lose Shi'i, but mav is still alive He's looking for his opportunity. Ooh, Tekken Kid realizing that is the real target. But that means that the rest of his team kind of died in the back line. So in the end, it's a 2 for 4 We're looking for the long range stun. Not connecting. And so I guess we're just gonna... Are we still looking for the chase? Terra is kind of dangerous, to be fair. But they still have the Decker up. So I feel like they can go for uh, maybe an objective. It's a bit tough to say. Like they don't have a lot of objective damage beside the Revenant. And here we can see they can kid lurking around, but they're finally going to go for it. Decker is kind of making it tough for Tekken Kid to even like come inside. They tried to turn the aggression on them. They can kill his 1 HP. He's dodging. Seismic is just zoning, not risking it. Unstoppable has been used. Mav is finally coming back. But... Tekken is going to survive. And we got the Equinox being completed. So we're kind of going for a full crit build. Full squishy build. And now we have like the Primal Fang... Primal Blaze on all five players. So that should be like securing for them like if they play it correctly and slowly the the o prime and with that o prime they should take like a very strong option to win that match Ying kind of... Ooh, that's a lot of damage. We didn't... Uh, backlash. Ooh, the black hole. And that's gonna be a dead in. Very good engage once again from Wangol. I wish the drone wasn't jumping. I'm just trying to watch the action. So we try to go for the turnaround. She is getting low. They do secure the kill. They're chasing into Bond Root. Ooh, Bondrood 1 HP. And they're gonna secure 4 kills. Penguin is looking, but Seismic is a little bit too far ahead. And he has Galaxy Grief, so I don't think they're gonna catch him. Oh. Fun button wasn't enough, but then one goal comes. So it's a full team wipe. While the team had the Primal Refanctus. So once again, like, very, very good team fight by the side of Rogue. And I feel like they have to... Like I said, like I feel like their front line can be a little bit of a problem, but Wengold 
time and time again finds those very, very, very nice black hole. And uh, yeah, the double support, I feel like we're lacking a little bit of damage. And um, like I feel like the team fight on the side of the doctors from the comp and the strategy is not working that well in the end. So the enemy team has our prime on all five members. Let's see actually how they uh, use it to maybe try to close out the game. So here, I guess we're just like waiting for the enemy team to push because they have the orb prime. So you don't, like you don't really want to fight on their term. You're just gonna like catch what you can and probably gonna try to defend at inhibitor's level. There is no reason to really like expose yourself too much though she is getting caught and she's uh, forced to ult away, I think. They can, can just like rushing down. It seems that the side of Rogue is more like looking towards uh, securing the Primal Fanctus, but here we try to be aggressive towards Wangle, and that's probably going to be a dead Wangle. Like, Yin is very, very strong against the Gideon in 1v1. Like, Gideon should never be in a situation where she ends up in a 1v1, and with Wangle dying, that's probably this Primal Fanctus gone, and all the work they built to get like this or prime and creating that push is not kind of gone simply because Wango like I don't think Wango can actually afford to be alone uh, when they meet him as both Revenant and Yin as their carry I don't think Gideon can survive uh, in those on Kunter So now we're trying to buy a bit of time on the Dusk side while on the side of the Doctors we of course like want to secure some kill. Penguin is actually like in a difficult spot. We're gonna go into the back line, use the Quelling Grace to kind of create the 1v1, flash away, letting the rest of the time take the hit. Aro is kind of stuck and that can be maybe king. We're trying to chase that, try to get as much damage as we can. And we get the mural ultimate, triple kill. Tekken Kid is actually like being a bully against Bondrood, but that means the mini inhibitor is probably gone. Wangol is back. No, and the wave is super far away. So no, mini inhibitor is never gone, but that means probably Primal Fangtus for sure. Like, Yin seems to be pretty good at dealing with objective late game. Like, she's taking almost no damage through all the lifesteal. Five Fangtus being secured. Like, I have to admit, I have to say, if they had, like, a more normal team comp, probably game is already over, because the fact that Trog managed to keep winning team fight after team fight, the fact the f despite the fact that they are so far behind on objectives, in my opinion, just come down to the kind of strategy that has been tried here by the doctors that feel like that their team fight is kind of rough but at the same time like is it rough because of the strat or is it rough because they're not like well acquainted with the strat because they're trying something new uh, if there is a team that i can trust to like keep pushing and trying different stuff uh, it's definitely the doctors, so I guess they will like either try to refine it or reach a conclusion it's not worth it. But it, it was great to see like this refreshing aspect of the double mid into double jungle. That's uh, that was some special things. Once again, like I said, I don't think it's actually that strong. We have seen that 
The mid lane was super far behind. The jungle wasn't that far ahead, if not even ahead at all. So definitely don't use that jungler to justify the fact that you just come into mid lane to steal all the farm. Because I don't think in your rocket game it's going to work well for yourself. So here we try like to force the fight. We try to go into the backline, target the enemy carry first. Use the Quelling Grace to try to secure like kind of like a secure point of contention. It's not going to be enough for the unit to survive, but that means we already killed three people. So... In the end, one for three in that moment in the match, it's definitely worth it. Should be enough to be able to secure the mid inhibitor. Is it enough to finish the game? Maybe. They don't have all prime though. But they don't have really great deep push on the enemy team either. No minions anymore, they have to be careful about that. Core is gonna not take that much damage. Tekken Kid is back. Probably secure the right inhibitor here. Don't do anything too crazy. Okay, they're gonna disengage. Gonna go for the reset. As a team. 42 minute mark. Astral Kettle is being complete as the sixth item on Chi. We get a bit of until. Super, super late in the match, but it's not like there is crazy amount of healing in the enemy team. We just get the mutilator, lifesteal, those type of things. Do we got the Draconum, which is a bit of healing. And it must be started to be complete. We're only missing on Grati uh, and on Bondrud. Imperator is the last item for Mav. Probably, if this team fight doesn't go well for Rogue, that's game. And we have the Muriel like going for the split push. Oh, we go for the flash. Try to go for Aru. Carry in the late game. If you can like force it. That makes the team fight very, very hard. Here you can see. Map is rotating towards Chi. That's gonna be an inhibitor down. Gideon needs to be very, very respectful of the Yin. They can keep trying to find an angle from behind, but Seismic is uh, the one that is going to get encountered and Decker can build a lot of time. It's probably Tekken Kid is dead and without Tekken Kid, I don't think they can win any team fight. So we get three kills because in the meantime, we also get uh, Gratty that ended up falling. So we're just going to get all prime and then we push and then we win the match. So overall, like if we can take that time until they push to kind of cover, recap a little bit the match. But yeah, it was interesting. We got like the double uh, support crest that I didn't catch until the 18 minute marks. But I think that's where like we see Mav very heavily in the mid lane, farming a lot of the waves because otherwise the wave would be fully lost. But the wave are also a little bit lost onto Mav because he has the hunt. So. Not sure about how much value you actually gain from that. It feels like in the mid-game team fight were impossible to play for the side of the doctors. But in the end, they managed to secure, they farmed pretty hard, and they end up winning that match. That has been pretty pretty back and forth. Like I said, I think I keep saying it, but I like the ID for the experimentation. I'm not sure it's really working out in predecessor. Uh, but still, kudos for testing it. In the end, they win the match. I feel like they make the match harder for themselves by going that experimentation, but they're still a very, very strong team that navigate those team fight very well, just diving the backline to kill Aru time and time again. And they end up securing the match, and that was another way to play kind of Yin, which was interesting to see. I hope you enjoyed that Scream review, and I will see you in the next one.